still staying in Scotland. I guess they have a reputation for their their, their uh, love of beer, and certainly Scotch. But um, Roman writers here actually a very interesting site uh, at uh, Vindolanda. This is uh, they talk about beer, actually Celtic beer, Coresa, uh, some of them like cerveza, which is the Latinized and you know, Spanish. Um, version of, of what beer is, because that's the interpretation um, based on the translation. There's a whole bunch of these, uh, they're like postcard-sized wooden tablets that have been found. I think over 400 of them, uh, they talk about uh, what's, what, what that beer was happening, or what that beer was being traded back and forth in this garrison. Uh, Roman uh, so yeah, you can see the, the Roman writings of the here, the interpretation of what the the so-called barbarians, as they refer to Celts of the hinterland of Iberia, um, and into Gaul, which is France. Uh, so Ireland, a uh, country near and dear to my own heart, uh, where there's now evidence based on a couple of Billy Quinn and Declan Moore, two archaeologists, John Beholder and Fulbright, as they often are found. Um, and so I what the heck are these um, talking about Tolkafiyas, which are an Irish word basically uh, on earth and mound. Typically, these are the most ubiquitous archaeological site in prehistory in Ireland. Uh, over 5,000 are found, typically in the south of Ireland. They do kind of are scattered throughout. Always very near to a water source. Uh, typically, there's a, a trough in the middle, it can be water stone. This one's actually from Wicklow, so over here in the mountains. That was excavated with uh, what seems to be, actually what's inside here, three or a series of um, swan longbones, I think maybe an early bagpipe. So uh, why that was in there, hard to say. Uh, but uh, likely it was that uh, you know, the interpretation is, well, these were either used for tanning hides or they were used for um, you know, the production of large amounts of, of a liquid of some sort, this is hot rocks, fire crack rock in there. So these guys ended up doing an experimental batch, and this is something I would like to do given the time uh, and the place, uh, is to do one of these again, is to make a trough and try to recreate this. Maybe we can have a site on campus designated to this point. Um, so these fellas, yeah, actually, Declan Moore and Billy Quinn ended up uh, recreating this, and uh, this is one of the now leading theories as to what these. Uh, these enigmatic features were the flock of the house that they were perhaps most likely brewing, uh, brewing uh, features. And so what they did is actually filter the grain through baskets and then into uh, ceramic vessels as well. So we're, we're moving to the new world. And uh, I wish I could talk more about you know, Walkie's place in this, but actually that's this week's um, I've discovered all the appearances the next you know, Wednesday. We'll talk about Milwaukee. Uh, brewing in this city, but we'll stay with prehistoric archaeology at this site. Very interesting, a very recent analysis, too. Uh, by uh, what seems to be a brewery uh, at Serval. This is basically a large trunk. Uh, that's what Serval means, trunk mountain, if you will. But the Ware uh, Empire came through, they were kind of kind of came down from the north and ended up colonizing this region. And for whatever reason, decided to have a settlement up on top of this large, you know, tabletop mountain, a mesa, I would say. Uh, what was interesting about this site is that here's, obviously, evidence of a brewery, a uh, large, you know, boiling room in here, with all the things you expect, large vessels for, for the production of, to boil a liquid, uh, as well as, you know, corn, and then you come in here to the fermentation room, which is what they're interpreting as that. Of course, milling in here, so you have the grain, uh, in this case, with the corn maize, which is the product of the new world. Um, and so what happens at this site, which is interesting, upon, uh, upon abandonment of the site, which is often happens, is this ritual kind of closing of a site or of a building uh, and a massive consumption feast, in this case. Uh, what happens is, there's a series of these jars, there's the fermentation jars. There was evidence that they, there were certainly women were the producers of this, of this beer, or as in this case, chicha, which is a modern derivative of corn, maize beer. Uh, large cloak, or these cloak bins that are made out of copper, that are almost exclusively female items, there were several of them, I think how many were there, seven or so, ten shulkins that were found uh, in context with this, as well as a whole variety of these very nice, elaborate, painted vessels, they're actually cups, 
they originally smashed on uh, then the subsequent burning of the facility. Uh, why that was done, who knows? They may have just decided to move back, back north, or they were forced out. But at some point, they realized that they were going to leave this site. It obviously didn't make sense to live up there long term. I mean, this is very difficult to get water and food up to this site. So, um, but they had a they had a, a, a ceremony anyway, at least about a thousand years ago, where they actually closed the site and left behind these uh, the archaeological evidence. And uh, kind of interesting. So again, this is a female on the production of here, which then you get into the Inca period, and there's actually uh, acoasis, which are basically a uh, schools dedicated for girls, young girls that would take out of local groups, of villages, to kind of be um, caretakers for the empire, for the, the elite Inca, to produce, uh, among other things, chicha and uh, you know, things like that. So basically, yeah, there's different types of chicha in this day and age, modern chicha, they come in different forms, um, but again, names being one of the primary fermentable, um, you can see it's an opaque color. Uh, Mesoamerica now, you get, obviously, corn was well, well used, well endowed throughout this region. Some say, you know, that it led to environmental degradation because of the large population and necessity to produce that grain uh, ultimately was one of the factors in why uh, the region was disbanded from its uh, empire state of the classical period. But what's interesting about this, we're not talking about corn, but in this case, what is found in some of these really brown bodega vessels is that uh, there's residue now of actual cacao, so fermenting of the cacao plant, the chocolate beer. I mean, they knew they, they had, you know, they were making chocolate. That is a fermentable. Yeah, more of maybe a more of a wine type chocolate or a liqueur for the uh, cream of cacao. Um, but uh, yes, this is this is one of the sites that is talked about. Puerto um, Rico, and uh, it's actually in Honduras. It's right on the border, periphery of the, uh, the Maya Empire. Uh, so you have that site, and now actually, um, Dogfish Head Brewery, with uh, with uh, the help of um, Dr. Uh, McGovern over at Pennsylvania is now trying to recreate that recipe. So, it, from what I can tell, it's actually going to be marketable soon. Uh, chocolate beer. So, keep your eye for that one. I think it should be quite tasty. Um, so, I think this is probably the last slide as we move into kind of the more you know, ethnographic context of still uh, taste mino, which is, you know, this again a maize from kind of chicha, called by different names, still the same animal ultimately. Uh, used in ritual ceremonies um, by the Taramara people of northern Mexico. And you know, these are probably remnants of, of ritual festivals that happen yearly uh, and that might go back quite, quite a long time. Uh, fermenting corn to make, um, to make an alcoholic beverage for it. For the use of uh, accessing that divine state, as the monks then in Europe ultimately would try to replicate as well uh, with their beer access God and call what would end up being yeast. God is good. So it was both nutritious, as we'll see in closing points. Over time, what, what it is, I mean, it, beer, ubiquitous sort of uh, substance, alcoholic beverage, independently likely created, stumbled upon, but once it was, uh, it was refined and quickly spread throughout the region, uh, ideas passed down, started in the domestic context, became very ritualized uh, and even industrial to a certain state, well, at least pre-industrial, uh, until you get to obviously our industrial revolution where it becomes a massive scale, uh, just look at our own city and how that